Welcome to U.S. Represented. This discussion will cover commas as they relate to introductory elements. The first thing we'll do is overview the definition of an introductory element, and then we'll break introductory elements down into their three main components, words, phrases, and subordinate clauses. Then we'll finish with a brief review. An introductory element just opens a sentence and modifies a word or group of words in the main clause that follows. The easiest way to think about an introductory element is that it just comes before a sentence that stands on its own as a complete thought, and it takes a comma. So the example we have down here is, of course, scientists respect both Newton's and Einstein's theories. The group of words, scientists respect both Newton's and Einstein's theories, is a grammatically correct, standalone main clause, which is also called a simple sentence. Therefore, of course, is an introductory element that takes a comma because it modifies the rest of the sentence. The three basic types of introductory elements are always words, phrases, and subordinate clauses. By definition, a word is just an indivisible unit of meaning. If you put letters together and you can't break them down into something smaller that means something, you have a word. Phrases, on the other hand, are groups of words that don't have subject-verb relationships. Accordingly, a phrase is more than a word. It's two or more words, in fact, but it cannot stand on its own as a complete thought. A subordinate clause is a group of words that does have a subject-verb relationship. It has a subject-predicate relationship, a predicate being a verbal word grouping. But the subordinate clause does not stand on its own as a complete thought because it begins with a subordinating conjunction. Here we have introductory elements as words. One of the easiest ways to find where the introductory element is, and to place a comma immediately after that, is to make sure you find the subject-verb relationship in a main clause that stands on its own as a complete thought. In the first example, elsewhere, the crops grew well, the crops grew well is a main clause. It's a grammatically correct sentence. Elsewhere is an adverb that indicates place, and remember, Adverbs are just words that modify practically anything. An adverb can modify another word, another phrase. An adverb can even modify a sentence. That's the job of an adverb. The only thing to keep in mind about adverbs is they don't directly modify nouns. That's what adjectives are for. So the first example, elsewhere the crops grew well, makes perfect sense. In the second example, however, is a conjunctive adverb that modifies a standalone complete thought. However, comma, unapplied thoughts do not produce results. Conjunctions just link ideas. They can link words, phrases, or clauses. Adverbs, as we already heard, modify words or phrases or clauses. And therefore, however is a conjunctive adverb because it's linking whatever sentence came before this sentence, however, unapplied thoughts do not produce results, and it's also modifying the concept by creating the idea of contrast or opposition. In the third example, we have what's called an intensifier. Truly, comma, you earned respect for your work. Truly is an intensifier because it adds more substance or meaning, at least in theory, to the sentence. You earned respect for your work. The one thing I would suggest here is to be careful about using intensifiers because in our verbal communication we have the terrible habit of overusing them, and we certainly don't want to do that in our writing. Other examples of words as introductory elements include finally, comma, the golfers completed the round. Finally has to do with sequence. Also, comma, please remember to include commas, represents addition. And it's also tied to the idea of comparative analysis. And therefore represents cause and effect. Therefore, comma, she moved as soon as possible. And therefore is a conjunctive adverb as well.
Introductory elements also function as phrases, and in ways usually more sophisticated than words in introductory elements. For instance, in the end, comma, no one remembered her name is an example of an introductory element showing sequence. No one remembered her name, of course, is a main clause, and in the end means that something finalizes the concept. In the second example we see here, worried about utility bills, comma, the maid turned off the dining room lights, we have what's called a verbal in the form of the word worried. A verbal is nothing more than taking a verb like worry and adding a D or an ED or an ING ending, which means verbals take on all sorts of different forms. They can suddenly become adjectives, adverbs, or nouns. In this particular case, worried serves as an adjective in the sense that the maid is worried, or the worried maid turned off the dining room lights. But because we use worried in a phrase which doesn't have a subject-verb relationship, but it does have a group of words, we add sophistication and dimension to the concept. Worried about utility bills is much more significant to the focus of the conversation than just saying, the worried maid turned off the dining room lights. Why was she worried? The introductory phrase explains why. She's worried about the utility bills. In the third sentence, we have an introductory element that gives an example, specifically the phrase, for instance, comma, dull music calms shoppers. Introductory elements take on their most sophisticated form with subordinate clauses. We have two good examples here. First, when workers get reckless, comma, injuries occur, underscores the fact that a subordinate clause as an introductory element can actually be more complex, well-developed, and significant than the main clause it's modifying. Here we have when workers get reckless, which is pregnant with meaning, because it leads to the idea of a very negative consequence, injuries occur. In the next example, we have, now that the work week is over, comma, we can barbecue with the neighbors. Again, we have a subordinate clause, a clause being a group of words with a subject-verb relationship, because we have week is over, week is, subject-verb relationship. But since we begin this sentence with now that, this doesn't stand on its own as a complete thought. Now that the work week is over, as itself, is a fragment. That's why you need to complete the thought with another main clause, comma, we can barbecue with the neighbors. With all of this said, let's workshop a little bit. Here we have three sentences that all need commas in order to function as grammatically correct introductory elements with commas and main clauses. The first example begins with a word that serves as an introductory element. Soon, comma, everyone will remember what he said. The word grouping, everyone will remember what he said, is a standalone complete thought slash main clause and, therefore, soon modifies the rest and it does need a comma. The second example offers a tip-off, which is the green squiggly line. This means Microsoft Word is telling us there might be a grammar error. Don't always trust Microsoft Word's spell and grammar checkers, because sometimes they will lead you astray. But in this particular case, if we right-click and click on U, comma, indeed, we have just separated an introductory element without U, comma, from the main clause. The project will fall apart, project will, subject, verb. And then finally, one thing you don't want to do with sentences that begin with whereas is put a comma right there because whereas is a subordinating conjunction that ties to several other words that follow. Here, in order to place the comma in the correct spot, you sort of need to back engineer and take a look at the final part of the sentence in order to determine where a grammatically correct standalone group of words begins. And that place is with Jennifer. Jennifer preferred soccer. Therefore, 
what you have is a subordinate clause, and whereas Tanya liked the Raiders, that's a subordinate clause, because it has a subject-verb relationship. Tanya liked, but doesn't stand on its own as a complete thought because of the subordinating conjunction whereas. And after you're done with that subordinating conjunction and subordinate clause, whereas Tanya liked the Raiders, you place a comma there and finish off with Jennifer preferred soccer. And what you wind up with in that particular construction is called a complex sentence where you begin the sentence with a subordinate clause followed by a main clause. So, to review two final points, it's always worth keeping in mind that if you can find the main clause in a sentence, you can almost always determine whether or not an introductory element exists in that sentence, because it comes before the main clause and it's going to take a comma. The other thing to keep in mind is that even though in some cases you don't necessarily have to use a comma for an introductory element, you are never wrong when you do. So it's a good idea to be safe as opposed to sorry insofar as sometimes when you do not use a comma after an introductory element, the meaning of the sentence gets confusing. It can have double meanings, or it can be so vague that the reader is not exactly sure what you're trying to say. Thank you for being here, thank you for being who you are, and we'll talk to you soon.